Hello, um, this is Pastor Jeff Snow from First Baptist Church in Port Hope. And this is week two of attempting to do messages and devotionals online on our YouTube channel, First Baptist Port Hope. Thank you so much to Ruth Wilkinson, our worship leader and all around techie person for helping me put these things together and get these things online. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're staying in touch with each other at the church. And if you're not from First Baptist, hope you're keeping in touch with your friends and your loved ones and your family and um, staying healthy and well and safe. You notice how crooked my glasses are when you see yourself on your own laptop. But anyway, um, I want to share a word from Psalms with you this week. And we've got um, some varying things that are helping me out here. We're going high tech with the scripture passage on the phone and we're going low tech with notes on paper, a bit of both here, but uh, last week we shared from um, the book of Psalms about being still and knowing that I am God. This week we want to share another passage from the book of Psalms. It's a uh, passage that meant a lot to me when I went to a really rough time a number of years ago. It was something I held on to a lot and it came to my mind this week thinking that perhaps it would be something that would be helpful to all of us as well as we do some thoughts. So we're looking at Psalm 62, verses 5 to 8. Psalm 62, verses 5 to 8. Just imagine that it's kind of written long. Just but you could pull out your Bible. You could uh, look at it on your screen. Psalm 62. We're going to read verses 5 to 8 together. Psalm 62, verses 5 to 8 says this. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. So there's a number of key concepts and key ideas that, and key words that are all throughout that passage we want to look at. The first one is in verse 5 where it says find your rest in god we kind of talked about that last week about be still and know that i am god that a lot of us are being forced to slow down that this is an opportunity for us to to do things differently and to rest and to um, focus on things that are important but here we were talking about not just resting period but resting in god and i have this image of um, a child who kind of crawls onto his parents' lap. I've been, I've been watching uh, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon online, and he's self-quarantining with his family, and he's doing the show at home with his wife and kids, and, and his little five-year-old daughter keeps crawling onto his lap all the time and he's trying to do different things on the, on the video. And um, but I had this picture of a child who crawls onto a parent's lap and just leans against the parent's chest and just looks so contented and so secure and to me that presents an image of confidence the child is confident in the parents care protection the child is confident in the parents protection there's a lack of worry there's this look of contentment and security on the child's face and and i think we can kind of put ourselves in that situation when we talk about resting in god that we can have confidence in him that we could know that he is protecting and watching over us that we don't have to worry. We can cast our cares and concerns and anxieties on him because he cares for us. And then there are others in our society who, this isn't a time of rest. This is like you're even more burdened than usual. I saw something online where somebody had done a collage of pictures of, of face portraits of, of medical personnel after they had finished a ridiculously long shift. And it was just titled like Faces of Exhaustion. You see the exhaustion in their eyes and in their faces and the lines on their on their face where the, the masks and the, the shields were. And um, I can imagine they would go home and part of them would be like just wanting to flop into bed exhausted, but another part of them was probably thinking about all they saw and all they experienced and it would be difficult to find rest. But it's, it's the same thing in that situation, trying to find our rest in God, knowing that we can cast all our cares and anxieties and worries on Him and find the rest we need. There's a passage, a little line in Psalms, I should have looked it up before I came and talked to you about this, but I, I didn't. But I know it's in Psalms somewhere. And it says, um, 
this one line, it's like a wish to someone else. And it says, may your sleep be sweet. May your sleep be sweet. I've always liked that, that idea of, because sometimes we, our minds can go a mile a minute and we have a hard time sleeping because there's so much on our minds and, and that affects our rest and it affects our well-being. But it's my prayer for all of us through this that, that our sleep would be sweet and that we would find our rest in God as we move through these situations. Verse 5 also says, my hope comes from God. My hope comes from God. Today, in today's society, we use the words hope and wish kind of interchangeably. Um, we talk about, um, you know, hope is like what we, what we wish would happen. We, I hope I'll get that promotion. I hope I'll get an A on that paper at school. I, I hope that person will like me. Um, we kind of use that, say hope, but what we're really talking about is, is wish. And that's not the biblical idea of what hope is all about. We were doing a Bible study online uh, at the university in Oshawa. Uh, last night, a bunch of us were on video chat. And we were, this was last week. We were doing a study on hope. And um, the video Bible study we watched talked about how in the Hebrew Old Testament, in the Greek New Testament, the words for hope gave the idea of something that was certain. It's not something you wished for. It was like, I put my hope in this because I know that it's going to happen. And that's the idea of um, hoping in God. It's not just wishing he's going to do something. It's a sure thing. His promises are yes and amen. If he's promised something, he's going to do it. If he's promised to give us peace that passes understanding in difficult times, we could we don't have to wish for it. We know. We can trust. We know that he's going to do it. God is someone we can rely on without fail. And we can hope on Hope in and be sure. Verse 6 says, he is my rock. Um, I see a rock as like a, a strong foundation. Um, I've been watching, I guess we've all been watching things kind of past the time in our free time since we can't go out, we can't hang out with people. And so um, I've been pulling out some DVDs that I've acquired over the years. And I have this uh, PBS documentary series on New York City. New York City has always fascinated me. I got to visit there once, 23 years ago, for a weekend, and love to go back again. Um, but we need to pray for New York City because they are having a really, really tough time right now. But the, they were interviewing all kinds of different people in this thing about New York City. And one of the guys they were interviewing, this was 1999, was Donald J. Trump. Now, before he was president, and even before he was a reality TV show star, he was very well known for being a building developer in New York City. And he was talking about how Manhattan is a great place for skyscrapers to be built because the bedrock foundation of Manhattan is so solid. The rock is so solid that when they dig down into the foundation, and once they put the foundations of the buildings there, nothing is not going anywhere. And they can build these tall, tall buildings. One of the episodes talked about um, 1945, apparently, a, a warplane that was heading for an airport in New Jersey, got lost in the fog, and ended up striking the Empire State Building on the 75th floor. And, and some lives were lost and some damage was done. But they said people on the bottom floor, like on the 20th and the 15th floor, aside from hearing the fire alarm, didn't have a clue what was going on because they didn't feel a thing. It was just a, a strength. The foundation provided a lot of strength for that building. Jesus' parable talks about the difference between building uh, the wise man building a house on the rock and the foolish person building a house on the sand, the rock being the firm foundation. And so when we say he is my rock, we're talking about how he is my foundation, my strong foundation, and from which I build my life out, outwards from that foundation, my, my perspective on things, my worldview, my mindset, everything. Um, Today, as I was thinking about this message, a bunch of songs came to mind. I posted them on my Facebook page. Um, a bunch of songs from the early 90s. So they're dated. <laughs> Some younger people may kind of go, eh, hey, what's that all about? But um, and I didn't post them. A couple of them were like really rock songs from a Christian band called Petra, one of my favorites. And so um, it's hard to actually play the songs because a lot of people would kind of go, gosh, that's loud, <laughs> you know. Um, rather than listening for the words. So let me read you the words to this one song that I thought was really cool. That the earth is shaken. It's like a bad dream. 
This world is crumbling, coming apart at the seams, but I am on the rock. Everywhere I'm turning, it's only bad news. The bomb is ticking and we're coming to the end of the fuse, but I am on the rock. I am on the rock, the sure foundation. I am on the rock, his revelation. Though the winds may blow and though the floods may blow, I shall not be moved because I am on the rock. And so this passage in Psalms talks about how Jesus is our, our rock, our firm foundation. And this is how we can face difficult times, troubled times, by having that firm foundation in Jesus Christ. It gives us the strength to go through whatever life throws in us. And we build a strong life on the foundation of Jesus Christ, the foundation of God. Page two. Verse six talks about how God is my salvation. I think of salvation, I think of like being saved from difficult circumstances. Uh, I first think of, of um, I don't swim very well. So when I go to the beach, I'm kind of cognizant of this because uh, I think of being saved like a lifeguard who goes out to save someone who's drowning. My salvation, it's, God wants to be our salvation in difficult times. The most difficult thing that we all face, every one of us, the greatest disease we all face is the disease of sin. And Jesus came to die on the cross so that we can be forgiven and healed of that disease of sin. As we accept Christ's forgiveness and welcome him into our lives, um, that disease can be taken care of um, and removed from our lives. Through Christ, we are saved from the disease and the distress of sin. Through Christ, we are given protection. And it's always appropriate, especially in times like this, to pray for protection for ourselves, for our families, for the people, people that we love. Because it's always important to remember that um, the Lord causes the rain to fall on the, the, the good and the evil, and the just and the unjust. We live in a fallen world. We live, live in a world where, where things are not perfect. And Christians, even Christians, will suffer from disease and illness and even face death sometimes. A lot of my colleagues in ministry are from the Pentecostal church, and we've been praying for an elderly couple who've been in ministry for years and years and years who are out west and are in critical condition in the hospital with COVID-19. And um, we wonder why bad things happen to good people, but we know that God is always working out his protection, whether that's keeping the disease at bay, whether that's giving people the strength to get through the disease so they can people can have rest and hope in difficult times, or sometimes God uses physical death in order to bring his children into the complete life, into the fullness of knowing God and knowing their salvation. Um, knowing that God's our salvation, we realize that this, this life isn't all that there is, that there's more to life than just what we can see. And he um, wants to bring us all into that fullness of what we were created for, both here on this earth and in the life to come. God is our salvation. Verse 6 says that God is my fortress. And again, this is an idea of protection. It's a defensive thing. And it says, I will not be shaken. God protects me. So does that mean in this virus world right now that we can just go out and do whatever we want because we're protected? Does that mean that churches can start opening their doors in meeting because we're protected? I don't think God wants us to be foolish or foolhardy or irresponsible. Scripture talks about obeying the secular authorities that God has put in place over us. So I think it's important to do all that we can to protect ourselves and to protect those around us as well. A few of my friends have been posting this quote from Martin Luther that he uh, wrote in the 1500s during a time of the plague. And he talked about how I will fumigate, I will he didn't use the word self-isolate, but that's kind of what he was getting at. I will not go out and intentionally put people around me in danger. I won't do anything to prolong this plague. So he's talking about the importance of being responsible, the importance of doing everything that he could um, to not make things worse. But then at the tail end of this dissertation, he writes a short little paragraph at the end and he says, but if I see a need that the Lord wants me to, to reach out and meet, I will go and I will do what I can to meet that need. And then he goes right back again saying, but 
under general circumstances, I will do everything I can not to make things worse again. The early Christians were, were became well respected in society in the second, third century. Um, even secular historians tell us that um, what would happen when a disease or a plague would hit a village when everybody else was running out, the Christians were running in. And that changed society's perspective about Christianity, that they were all reaching out to help those that were in need. And so I think one of the things that we have the opportunity to learn as the church in these next few weeks is that the church is more than a meeting. It's wonderful that we can get together on Sunday and be together. I was chatting with one of our members this week who was saying she, even after a couple of weeks, she misses so much being together on Sunday. Um, and that's so important. I mean, getting together on Sunday and being a community is so important. But the church is so much more than a meeting. And we are called to be God's hands and feet uh, in this world around us, however we can. And part of that is to be very responsible. Part of that is not to be foolhardy. Part of that is to, is to make sure that we're doing all we can to cooperate with the rest of society so that this situation with this virus can be put to an end as soon as possible. But I think being God's hands and feet could also mean that if God puts a need on your heart, if you've been presented with something that you can safely meet, you know, to step out and do something, even if it's as simple as checking on a senior neighbor, senior neighbor and seeing if you can pick up some groceries for them, or just checking on people around and, and being a help and an encouragement however you can. Um, God has given us so many different opportunities to be a blessing, even in our isolation. And um, we can have these opportunities to be God's hands and feet. Um, and to be um, trusting in him to be our, our fortress and our shield and to look after us. A couple more. God is our refuge, our place of safety. We can hide ourselves in him. And as this continues, we need a refuge from bad news. I've been jokingly saying to some of my friends that uh, like the healthiest people mentally right now are those who don't watch the news because it can get a really, really uh, discouraging. Now, instead, I'm joking because it's important to be up on what's going on, to be aware of what's going on, to be aware of what we need to do and not do. But sometimes it can overwhelm us and we can have this temptation to fear and this temptation to panic and we need a refuge. We need this place of safety. We were doing an online Bible study last night with some university students, and the question was asked, where is your peaceful place? And all of us answered a specific, tangible place. Like I said, going down to the lake and just looking out over the water, I find very peaceful. And the other students mentioned specific places. And it, it dawned on me, as we were saying, talking that um, in many cases, we can't go to those physical places right now. So we need a place to find that inner refuge. And to be honest, we, just in our human psyche, we probably won't be able to find really what we need. We need it to find a refuge in God. We find a refuge in the Holy Spirit living within us and giving us all that we need to find that rest and that peace and that refuge. Verse 8 says to trust in God at all times. And we need to know at times like this that God is good. It's an essential part of his character. He is good, that he loves you very much. And that he is working all things out for his glory and for our good. And those two things are not mutually exclusive. They fit together. And it's in times of difficulty like this when we really discover that we can trust God, that God is trustworthy. A number of years ago when I was in Bible college, I was going through a time where I of sickness where I had to quit school for six months, I couldn't work. It, it was really, really frustrating, really um, discouraging. I was ill and didn't know when it was all going to end. And I'd say about three or four months into it, I was just having a time of prayer with God and just venting and being really, really frustrated. And, and finally, I get to the point where I got to the point where the only prayer I could pray was, God, I trust you, 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 I trust you. And I said it over and over again, I trust you. It was the only words I could find 
I think I said it so many times, not only as a declaration of faith to God that I was trusting, but just as a, as a means of, re- of convincing myself and reminding myself that God was good and that could, he could be trusted. And we're told in this psalm, trust in God at all times, whatever it is we're going through, we can trust him in the good times and the bad. And I think it's in the bad times where we learn to trust him more. Finally, in the psalm, it says, pour out your hearts to God. Pour out your hearts to God. He's given us this extra time in a lot of our lives where we could find the time to pray, and to be with him, to talk to him, and to, to come into his presence. And that's what he wants from us. He wants us to pour out our hearts to him, to tell us how we're feeling, to, to lay it all before him, our cares, our anxieties, our fears. And we have that confidence that we're not just talking to the air. We're talking to our heavenly father. We're talking to someone who cares about what we're going through and has the power to, to do something about what we're going through. He wants to lift our burden and give us the peace and the rest we need. So if I want to change the you know, trust in him at all times, pour out your heart to him in 21st century vernacular, I would say go ahead and vent. God can handle it. Vent. Tell him what's on your mind. Tell him what's on your heart. Lay it before him. And then once it's all out, thank him and praise him for the peace that he will give you over all the anxiety and for the help that he will give you. So the final line in the psalm says, for God is our refuge. So let us rest in him, secure in him, amidst all the, the uncertainty that's swirling around us. And let's help others to find that refuge in God. And, and the way that people will see it is through our example. As they see us trusting in God through all of this, They'll be wondering what is it that makes you tick, and they'll be hungry and desiring to, to know what it is that God can do in their life. Be a refuge, be someone that they can trust, be their rock and their salvation. Can I pray with you? Lord, thank you so much for the Psalms. Thank you, Lord, for the writers of the Psalms who are so honest and yet praised you so, so beautifully. And Lord, we just pray that you would remind us daily that you are our rock, that you are our foundation on which we stand, that that while other foundations may um, start to crumble, while our plans will start to erode and get washed away to the sea, um, your foundation is strong and your foundation is sure. Help us, Lord, to, to, to hope in that, not just to wish it, but to hope in it, to place our hope in that, that that is sure. I pray, Father God, that you would uh, you just remind us that we can trust you and that you are good. And that through all the circumstances that we're facing, Lord, I pray that uh, you would continue to give us a, a rest in you, a peace that passes understanding, just the knowledge that you've got everything under control. And for those of us who are facing really difficult times, either because of our work or because we have family or friends who are affected by this virus, I pray, Lord, that first of all you would provide protection that you would provide healing um you know all about this virus you made us you know how we work and you know how to fix this so i pray lord in your sovereignty and mercy that you've been healing to those who are afflicted with this virus but you would also lord that you would give us this calm assurance that that we have all things under control that this life is not all there is and that uh, we can have that confidence in you, both for now and for eternity. So, Lord, I pray that you would continue to remind us that you are our rock. You are our refuge. And help us, Lord, to share that with others. And help them to see it as well, that they can rest and rely on you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So look at all the other stuff around this Facebook page. YouTube channel and uh, check out the music that Ruth has put up and some of the other devotionals and the sermons from a couple of years ago. And I hope that they will serve to be an encouragement and a help to you. Continue checking in on, on each other, on your friends and on your family. And, um, and keep praying and keep digging into the scriptures yourself and, and trusting in God, the firm foundation. And uh, feel free to Drop us a line on our Facebook page. Call us at the church, 905-885-6021, 905-885-6021. If we can be of any assistance, either in prayer or in any other way. 
and we will talk to you again later. God bless.